Hello everybody, this is Ryan Thompson here for Champion Motorsports. Tonight we've got the GT3 Sprint Series at Hockenheim Ring. I am joined here by the ever-incredible Liam Park. Liam, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well, Ryan. I'm uh, looking forward to some great racing here at Hockenheim. Oh, Hockenheim never disappoints, does it? No, it certainly doesn't. So uh, the drivers are just uh, have pulled into the pits here for the drivers' meeting. So uh, they're they're hearing all the details about that. Uh, let's pull up the track map here and uh, maybe say a few words about that. So, uh, Liam, how do you? Uh, what are your thoughts on Hockenheim as we look at the track map here? Uh, well, the first uh, first section here is pretty quick. Uh, you can certainly expect a lot of uh, passing uh, into the hairpin as drivers get the draft through the parabolica. Um, they'll have to be a little more careful in the, the second half as the uh, course tightens up a little bit, uh, both in uh, technicality and uh, in uh, actual width of the course. Yeah, definitely. And uh, as you can see on the map here, if you're if you're not familiar with the CMS procedures, the orange section uh, notated on the map here is what we call the orange zone. Uh, on lap one, we ask drivers to just exercise extra caution in that zone because that's where, you know, the cars are still bunched up. Everybody's trying to race hard, but uh, we want everybody to be safe and not have a major incident. So that's what that's about. Um, and yes, the infield section is is definitely uh, a, a place to be careful for sure. So as the drivers are just getting ready for uh, quali here, why don't we have a look at the standings? Uh, so we've got our two classes, our pro class and our am class. Uh, so in our pro class, I'll uh, just do a quick rundown of the top, some of the top drivers here. So we've got uh, Max Muir in the number one spot uh, ahead of uh, Paul Darling by uh, just 10 points after two races. So that's, you know, that's a battle I think we can all look, look forward to this season. Uh, and then behind that, we've got JT Tammy, just eight points behind Paul. And uh, Michael Parker, one of the series admins, just uh, three points behind JT, with uh, Miguel and Jose tied for joint fifth behind that. So uh, lots of interesting points battles all the way down the order in the pro class. Um, and... Uh, why don't we have a look at the AM standings next here? So for AM, we've got Ricardo Delgado in the number one spot. And he is 18 points ahead of Shane Hunter in, in the number two spot with Bobby Babletskos in number three, just a few points behind Shane. And uh, then we've got a joint battle for uh, fourth by the looks of it between uh, David and Mike. So. Uh, again, if you look down the order, we've got, uh, what is that, an eight-way battle for for eight there between David, Tim, Christian, and, and all of those guys. So as this season goes on, you know, look forward to a lot more of that, a lot more close racing here. Uh, it's Liam, close any... racing on the track and close racing in the standings, too. Yeah, definitely. Are there any uh, are there any drivers here, Liam, that, that you're looking out for? I know you're on the, the same team I am. That's Can-Am Racing. Uh, you can always uh, always look for Victor Tanaka to uh, to be aggressive and move through the field if he's not starting out on the front row. Yep, definitely. Victor uh, has proven himself to be uh, very quick at winning uh, the last season, so uh, always a driver to watch out for. Uh, it's a pleasure to see James Stacy back in the series after uh, a few uh, few seasons off. So good to see him racing again as well. Absolutely. So the drivers are just on their their out lap right now. Uh, we can check in with uh, yeah, let's check in with James. Entering the infield section right now. Yep. Yeah. So getting ready to start his uh, his flyer. Interesting livery he's got there. I think that's uh, a holdover from the old Northwind. I knew I knew it from somewhere. Making 
sure to use all of the curb there on turn one. It's a fun, quick corner. Yes, what about 120 degrees, but a very fast kink. Certainly not much in the way of application of brakes through there. Yeah. Now it's full throttle here through Parabolica as we come into the hairpin. Pretty good through there. Certainly. Got a, a nice large field here tonight as well. Yep, 41 drivers. Uh, I, it was 40, but uh, I'm not sure who just snuck in right at the end there. Well, that certainly make for lots of uh, lots of action here. Yep, this is a track that uh, can get a little bit crowded in, in places. So first couple laps, I think we'll be definitely watching out for that. But uh, these drivers have proven they can race just about anywhere. Yes, that's certainly, certainly the case here. So uh, last week we weren't able to, to broadcast due to it technical issue with the uh, the Monza track that, that we were at there. But uh, yeah, wow, that was an exciting race. Uh, a little too exciting on the start. A little too exciting on the start, but uh, <laughs> we got, got through that and still had a lot of battles all, all throughout the field. So we'll see what happens tonight. If some drivers are, are out for uh, a bit of redemption or uh, just trying to get as many points as they can here. Well, let's hope there's a little, uh, little less enthusiasm maybe on the start. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll see, uh, see drivers push a little harder here. First lap. Yeah, yeah, it's a 75-minute race, so you know the old, uh, the old adage like you can't win on the first lap, but you can sure as hell lose. Yes, and with it being an endurance event. Uh, you know, drivers will have uh, put in some additional laps, so it'll be pretty frustrating, I would think, for anybody to, uh, to have their race uh, dashed uh, before even completing one lap. So. Definitely. So, let's check in with some of our other drivers here. We've got uh, some pretty smoking lap times coming in here. Uh, our, let's see if I can navigate my software here. Uh, stand by. Ken just put in uh, his fastest lap out of 139.7. And we've got some some really quick laps uh, near the, the top end of the field with Max doing a 137.6. That's actually his average uh, of, of the last five laps that he completed. So we'll get the, uh, the, the current lap times here pretty shortly. But it's going to be a tight field, I think. It certainly looks that way, especially starting uh, just outside the top five. Like most of the drivers have completed their their laps, just a few more people coming down the the field here. Just a few minutes left in Quali. Everybody will be taking a few moments there to catch their breath and make sure they've got their correct setups. Yep, get the fuel all figured out. What do you think about tires for this race? 
That's a good question, Ryan. Uh, with it being an endurance race, I think you'd have to give some serious thought to uh, to taking tires. Uh, if it was me, I'd probably be looking at taking at least uh, left side tires. So there's, uh, there's a few corners here that are pretty tough on that uh, that left front. Yeah, definitely. That that sounds about right to me. I haven't raced here in in a while, so. But but I do remember it being. You know, chewing up the, the front tires and, yeah, particularly the left. Just about four drivers left on track. And for some reason, I can't find any of them. I got their camel engaged. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> And uh, for for the returning viewers, uh, if you were expecting David to be here, unfortunately, he was not able to be here tonight. So uh, I'm sort of taking over his job on the cameras, although I'm not going to be as good at it as he is. So uh, I beg for your patience with that as we get ready to go underway here with just about a minute left in qualifying. So are we going to see you out on track soon, Liam? Uh, we have to see. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll make it back this season or not. I've uh, undergone some changes here at my house, and I haven't been able to uh, get into my rig as I would like to. Fair enough. I definitely know how that goes. Well, we hope to see you out there as, as soon as you're able. We have the number three car of Scott Kennedy just uh, coming up to the line with seven seconds to go here. Looks like he is going to just barely complete his lap. Count yeah. was a pretty good one. Not bad. So that's going to get that him. Some uh, fifth and am. Oh, pardon mm -hmm. me. He's not an am. He's a pro. Yep. So uh, yeah, show him twenty third overall, based on that time. And we're going to be gritting up. For the pole on M. All right, last minute reminders, no tire or brake warming on the formation lap. Keep up with your race. So we have Max Muir taking the pole once again this race in the uh, pro class and Ricardo Delgado taking the pole for fifth overall in the AM class. Uh, he's one we're going to have to watch, I think, Liam. He's uh, you know, very quick, uh, definitely quick for, for the AM guys. He certainly knows how to throw that Ferrari around, doesn't he? <laughs> Perhaps I should say guide, not so much throw. <laughs> Fair enough. He's got, some, uh, he's got some precision with that machine. Yes, he does. few drivers just uh, heading off the grid to maybe uh, heed your warnings there, Liam, to update their setups. It's not a good feeling when you uh, you start a race with qualifying <laughs> fuel. It's usually a good sign you're making an extra pit stop that race. Yep. Got three different manufacturers here starting in the top three. Yeah. Yeah, we do. 
the, the Porsche has proven to be a really popular choice since the update to the 992. But uh, good to see the Lambo and the Ferrari in the mix as well. And they're off for the formation lap. will be looking to get a little bit of heat here with the tires and brakes, but uh, not without uh, any weaving or aggressive accelerating and braking. Apply with uh, CMS's coat. Right. We've got a decently warm track tonight at uh, 29 Celsius. Yes, the temperature's certainly gone up here. Yeah, wasn't it uh, around 23, 24? And here's the green. Gil looking to get the inside or the outside, pardon me, on, on Max, but he's not able to. So they're going to go to those details for turn one. With uh, everybody just about single file behind them for the first uh, eight or nine cars there. Looks like everybody's behaved themselves so far. Pretty good, yeah, I don't see any issues here. We've got full green flag racing. The whole field is, uh, is trying to do their thing now. Max uh, in true Max fashion is already starting to do Miguel and Paul are certainly going to have uh, their work cut out to, uh, to keep up with Max. Yeah, definitely. It looks like they're, they've gained a bit of ground back in this uh, first few turns here, but well, it's going to shape out. There was some light contact there in the hairpin. Yep, I saw that too. I don't think anybody's too much worse for the wear. Well, there is a car off near the back there. I'll see if I can find that. Not showing up on, on the software here. Now we can see a car or two facing the wrong direction. Yeah. There's a green play for that, uh, looking at Max Mir here, paces through the end of the first lap. Holding down the fifth spot there. He's our AM leader so far. Yeah, so let's uh, let's just take a look. Uh, we'll be back in the field here. Let's check in on our current AM leader. I believe would be it's the 231 of Ricardo de Gaulle. Yeah. Here's Ricardo uh, in the mix with uh, a few pro cars, Michael Parker, Carlos Ramos on either side of him. Looks like he's uh, keeping it nice and tight here. You've seen all of the track and a little bit of the curb there on the exit. Yeah, it seems like some of these cars really, really like it when you do that, and a couple of them don't. So it looks like uh, we've had a pit stop already from Edward Nelson. I'm not sure if that was due to maybe the, uh, the incident that we saw previously. I would think maybe, um, given the scoring gap. Look at this time is being applied there. Either way, hopefully he's able to get that rectified uh, soon and back out on track. Yep. Got a few movers and shakers here. Uh, 
Samuel Scott up four positions already. Uh, JT Tammy, Brett, and Ken Estridge are also up uh, six spots. All three of them are. Yes, yeah, so they must be working together there to uh, slice and dice their way through. Sure they're uh, very happy to be moving up. Let's check in on that. So here's JT. He's Looks like he's maybe got a new livery in that Ford. And we can see, stallion. Yeah, we can see the number 86 of Brett just ahead of him, and the, or sorry, just behind him, and the number 62 of Rodney Campbell just behind. Or ahead, uh, uh, apparently it's backwards day today. I know JT's a uh, champion racing, oh, sorry, yeah, champion racing fan. That livery looks uh, a little bit uh, reminiscent of that. It does, and uh, champion emblazoned on the side there. I think wins weight to your theory. I always like to see JT uh, you know, arm wrestle that Ford around the track. I believe he's still the only one that uh, has tackled the Ford. It takes a certain kind of confidence to uh, get behind the wheel of that car. <laughs> Absolutely. A little bit more brute force than some of these other machines on track. Yeah, definitely. And uh, a rear end that kind of has a mind of its own sometimes. Inside and get it done there. It certainly is. That was a good move. I don't know if this is under attack from Kevin. Yep. Checking on our leaders here. Looks like uh, Max has pulled a bit of a gap, uh, still probably within striking distance here with, uh, with this much time to go. But uh, Miguel and Paul just oh. really uh, to get up there, I think. Uh, they could also be pacing themselves here a little bit. Perhaps uh, they're saving their tires for a little bit later in the race. Yeah, that's true. We've seen uh, Mikel be a strong closer in the past. So. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Ooh, a bit of an off track from Max there. Able to keep it going. Dipping a couple tires in the dirt. Certainly driving hard early. Yeah. Let's have a look. Uh, Paul's. Paul's cockpit here. Let's just see how this how this battle looks to him. So he's got Miguel up ahead of him. A bit of a distance, but still got a full view of what's going on. Just past the pit exit here, I believe. Yes, coming down the short shoot in the turn two. Absolutely, just butter smooth, not have a 
saw the wheel or anything to get around here. Even on this like, incredible amounts of walk here that we've got to put on to get around the hairpin. Very calm, cool, and collected. Yes. Hard braking coming up here to get around here. that corner a little bit to set up for this one. So you can see here is the course tightness in the infield. Drivers have to be uh, a little more conscious of those around them when they're making moves. Yeah. Some of these turns, real easy to get the car a little bit upset offline, but uh, not for Paul. He was able to get through it absolutely perfectly. Just like he's on rails. Just about. Like we've had an incident with uh, looks like Christian and Steven Yanni. Maybe have to just have a little look at this one. So here it is. That's uh, Christian in the in the 01 car and Steven just behind him. Yes, and that's definitely not a good feeling, no. especially if you're granted on the inside of a corner. Yeah, it's, you know, it's happened to all of us. Just get a little bit, uh, eh, whatever happened there, you know. Uh, a little bit late on the brakes or something, but it happens to the best of us. It sure does. He did a nice job collecting it back up there and getting underway. So let's take a look at our standings. So we've got uh, Max still leading the field here with a gap of uh, around about three seconds over Miguel. And uh, close behind is the P3 there. Uh, fourth place, we've got Michael Parker in the Porsche. And Ricardo Delgado is uh, actually an AM driver in overall fifth. Definitely worth the mention there. Uh, Carlos Ramos is uh, P5 in the pro class in uh, sixth overall. Uh, JP Alfonso next up in in uh, sixth in pro. Uh, Jose Diolio in uh, P7 in pro. And then uh, Steven Yanni in P8. And uh, then we'll, we'll go through the AM class here. We've got uh, Ricardo, of course, leading that uh, by quite a margin by the looks of it, uh, with uh, David McNeilis up in uh, P2 in AM class, uh, followed by Bobby Bebeletskos in P3 in AM class, and uh, that's all I can see for now, but uh, we can do a little bit of a rundown uh, maybe again a little bit later in the race here. Uh, doesn't look like a whole lot has changed near the front. Liam. No, but it is interesting to watch Paul uh, gain a little on Miguel through the corners and then Miguel pull away a little on the straights. I'm not sure if that Lamborghini's just got a little bit less downforce or maybe a little more grunt. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, whether it's down to setup or, 
or not. So, 75 minute race. Uh, pit strategy here could be interesting. We're, uh, you know, fairly certain the drivers are not going to be able to do a, uh, you know, full uh, no pit stop race. Um, if they could pull that off, that would be a miracle. But, uh, you know, when, when do you pit here? We talked about whether you take tires uh, earlier. Uh, so, for a race like this, uh, you know, track temp where it is, what would you think, Liam? Would you tend towards doing a full fuel run at the start and a you know, smaller splash at the end or try to go 50-50 or something else? Uh, if I wasn't taking tires, I think I would probably be full fuel with just a little splash towards the end. Obviously, in racing, uh, you know, everything can change, situation can change, and if you can find somebody you think maybe is holding you up a little, you can always uh, pit in early and try to... Uh, Pull off the old over under. That's something else that's always uh, always appreciated about a race that involves pit stops. It's just the additional strategy that uh, you get involved with there. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, our mics need a boost. So I'm going to turn down our game audio a little bit, and uh, I'm going to turn up our mics as, as high as I can go here. So, uh, yeah, let us know if that if that does the trick for you or not. I always appreciate a fan. Yeah. Uh. So, yeah, in the Twitch chat, we've got Turbo3 he said he's bummed to miss the race tonight. His uh, favorite car and track combo with the GT3 uh, will be back in the saddle after July 13th. Uh, I'm not sure who you are, uh, Turbo, but uh, yeah, we'll be happy to have you back, of course. Uh, and yeah, this is a 75-minute race. Well, I had a guess as to who that might have been, but I see he's actually out on track, so uh, certainly wasn't the right guess. Okay. Uh, I believe Turbo is going to turn out to be Chad Dick. So we've got uh, Justin Hess here has uh, just uh, completed some some important work and is able to join us on stream here for a little bit oh, excellent welcome to the, the broadcast justin yes yeah, so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna pull him in here and then we'll give him a good introduction Hey, Justin, Ryan Thompson here, and I've got Liam. How are you doing tonight, sir? Hello, hello. Not too bad. A little late, but not too bad. Good, good. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've had a chance to catch any of the action so far, but uh, we are just about 20 minutes into this 75-minute race. We have had uh, not a whole bunch happen at the front of the field, a few incidents closer to the back. Uh, Max currently out to about a four and a half second lead over Miguel for for the overall lead. And uh, it just uh, keeps going from there. I'm sure as the uh, other drivers would say, that's not as much as it usually would be by now, but it'll be interesting to see how it continues because while Max is very fast, I know the new car, he's had a little bit of issue with tire wear. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be pitting around the the halfway mark to take some new tires and if he's under fueled a bit. 
Yeah, yeah, we'll see what kind of strategies these drivers have uh, chosen tonight. We were just talking about that a minute ago. What, uh, Justin, what would you tend to on a race like this, 75 minutes around Hockenheim Ring? I would, I would tend to hope it's a 60-minute race so I could feel safe, but uh, <laughs> if, it's, if it's 75 minutes and you think you're going to need to take tires, I would tend to take as little fuel as possible so I don't waste time um, in the pits so that I'm covering the tires so I'm not losing, losing time. And that may be what Max does. That way you're, you're not carrying the excess weight around and you take tires and the amount of fuel you need at the same time. So if I was Max, that's what I'd be doing. I don't know the, the fuel numbers for today, but I would imagine he's coming in around the 45-minute the mark, if I had to guess. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, well, uh, I'm curious to see what, what uh, Max and everybody else is going to do here. Yeah, um, and the other thing to say is sometimes taking tires is a better route, not for, for tire wear itself, but... Um, at Le Mans, that's one of the reasons I got my my final win there so far, and I hope I, I add to that sooner rather than later. But I've got some uh, tough competition. But I was a able to save fuel being third in line in the trail and second in line for most of the race. But B, I didn't take tires, so while I was disadvantaged on the next lap, the tire warm up was so poor at Le Mans that it gained me several seconds, and that was all I needed for the uh, final splash and dash, even though tires may theoretically be better, they just, the warm-up was too long. So if you're going to do it, you definitely want to plan it optimally. So I don't think I'd imagine if you're going to take tires staying out past the 45-minute the mark, unless you're taking only one or two, right? But if you're taking all fours, then I would definitely be in at the 45-minute mark. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so so Justin, of course, being, uh, I would say one of the, you know, in a field of people who are really quick, you know, Justin's uh, definitely up there as one of the quickest, and also uh, definitely a setup guru. Guru, I would say, you know, you've always got the the strategies and the tweaks. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm I'm the quickest to get on it, but. With enough time, I definitely get something I think a lot of people are quite happy with. And on more than one occasion, I've been very fortunate for it to be one of the best setups if I'm uh, that lucky. Right. And I will say, I do think that actually slightly hampered me uh, last season. I think once I got my setup tuned, I was fairly competitive, but GT3 has never been quite my thing. Not that I don't like the car i do enjoy it but I, it's definitely not my my strength as far as iRacing goes and i think i compensated a bit too much with the setup and now that iRacing has decided to tweak things again just a little bit enough to uh take the setups out of the window that they were in i'm starting to realize hey maybe i should <laughs> go work on my driving a little bit before i start setting up the car and boxing it into a window it really doesn't deserve to be Yeah, that's a good observation. Sometimes it's easy just to get into the the setup mindset rather than just seeing what the car can do first, right? Yep, and I, I think as we're seeing today, you know, Max is very quick, but, you know, four and a half seconds, 25 minutes in, it's not unbeatable, especially if you account for a possible difference in uh, strategy, but we'll see. Definitely see it some moving and shaking here just out of the top 10. Uh, JT leading a whole gaggle. I don't imagine he's going to be fuel saving today either. He did uh, fuel save the last time, if I remember correctly, but had to go into the pits on the last lap or two. Yeah, I couldn't quite make it. So, Liam, we already looked at the, the car of James Stacy here. Uh, looks like, you know, he's been holding his own in, in P12 here overall. He certainly has. He's uh, moved up a few positions from start, and uh, I think he'd be pretty happy with that so far. Uh, Not... James has uh, been around long enough that I don't think he's too, uh, too worried about the action going on in his rearview mirror. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of it. 
But yeah, he's been able to make up six spots since the start. And uh, JT, who we were just looking at just ahead of him, is up 13 now. He was just up six, what, five minutes ago? Yeah, it was just before Justin came in. Yeah. So, yeah, JT, yeah, starting farther back than he's accustomed to, but is uh, definitely doing the work to get back up to where he wants to be. And unfortunately to say this, but I think Paul and the Ferraris in general have some rather poor tire where I think we're going to see him probably on an aggressive strategy if I had to bet. Fair enough. Just watching yeah. the onboard of his car. It is, oh, as I say that, commentator's curse. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah quite is... the moment. Right now we're following around with uh, James Stacy and Bobby Babalescos, who uh, have gone side by side for the better part of a lap now. <laughs> this is incredible. It looks like Bobby finally has the advantage to take that position away. Some good hard driving from both, both of our drivers. Oh, a little bit of a bobble there from from uh, the number 13 of Gabriel Albano. But he holds on to say, it. I would say Paul isn't the only Ferrari that's having uh, some tire, tire wear issues. Yeah, well, Gabriel's also under a lot of pressure here, so. That's true, he and I'm... do some hard driving. For whatever reason, the, uh, the Ferrari just seems to be one of the... of the field, one of the worst cars on tire wear. I'm sure the... Uh, the Ford and uh, a couple others are not happy with it either, but the Porsche and Audi and Lambo seem to treat them fairly well. Right. Oh, and we've just had a big incident there. Let's see if we can go back to it. I'm just going to back it up. That Is that was, the Porsche of Brett Stevens? I think so. Stand by. Let's see what happened there. Oh, he just got loose. Into the wall, hard hit. Oh, no, he's going to have to pit. He's got no steer. Oh, maybe he can. Look like he couldn't turn right. Like he's uh, mobile again, whether he's going to be able to get that back to the pits or not. Another question. Well, it looks like he did. Managed to get going. So let's check in on some of the other action that's going on on track. Uh, looks like Scott Kennedy might have... A, oh yeah, he had a big off here into the into the kitty litter, and he was able to rejoin safely and relatively quickly. So hopefully that didn't cost him too much. But I do show him now in the pits. So do y'all think he's just coming in early, or um, is he not happy with how the car's driving? Could be a combination of both. I do see a little bit of damage on the car. Yeah, I didn't see him hit anything there, but it could have been damage from earlier that we didn't catch. So drivers do have one fast repair that they can use. I don't know if he elected to use it here, but uh, just to you know keep the keep the fun going, we do give drivers one fast repair to more or less instantly fix their car. Uh, it does look like he's got a refreshed front bumper. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's possible so running over the uh, curb might have done something. iRacing loves to do that from time to time. Yeah, that's true. Looks like he's rejoining the field just behind our leader, Max Muir. Okay. So, some other some other good driving here from the likes of one uh, Ken Eskridge 
what I'm going to bring up now. He's, uh, looks like he's just heading into the pits, and uh, but he's managed to come up 10 spots from the start of the race, so really good drive from our currently overall P4 driver in the AM category. If we check in in our leaders here, here's the number 11 of Max. He is uh, still leading Miguel and Paul. He's starting to experience some traffic now, too. Yes, he is. We'll see. Historically, that hasn't been too big of a problem for him, but uh, it can definitely add that random element that can shake things up a bit. So the gap between Miguel and Paul has opened up now to about uh, three and a half seconds. You follow the onboard of Paul for a little bit. Yeah, You'll sure. notice he's driving a bit of an unhappy car at the moment, especially through the uh, final sector. Well, that's good. A cockpit view for Paul. This is going to be a little bit louder. I'll have to adjust the audio, but bear with me while we talk shop for a second. It's like we're riding along there, entry of turn two. Three, four, now we're on to the Parabolica. So much lock through that airpin. I'd be curious to know how much other cars are using through that hairpin, but this sector coming up, I've seen more than a, a few catches by Paul. Yeah, just a little one there. Bit of an arm wrestle down to the apex. Oh, oh. Manages to gather it up, but that's going to cost him a little bit of time. And uh, who is that? Is that Miguel off in front of him, or was that a lapped car? And this is I not the I'll... first time I've seen Paul having issues through that corner. Unfortunately, that was... uh... Sorry, go ahead, Justin. I haven't been uh, racing as much, and we were supposed to be working on the setups, but that's just one of the things I've noticed in the Ferraris. It really doesn't like you leaning on the rear tires. Or whether that's just a, a setup geometry, an iRacing thing, or whatever it may be. It's definitely something both he, I, and probably the rest of the uh, Ferrari field are going to need a remedy if we want to, uh, to not suffer so much from the tire wear. All right, so to give you a little update on our our uh, current podium sitters in, in AM, that would be Ricardo Delgado in P1, David McNeilis in P2, and Bobby Bebeletskos in P3, uh, followed a little bit uh, later by Zach Sternhagen in uh, fourth in AM class. And our pro field, I think, looks about the same. We've got uh, Max Muir, Miguel Colon, Paul Darling in P3 with Michael Parker uh, itching to get into that mix in P4. He's probably close enough now that he should be able to get a draft off of Paul. That'll certainly help him. Yeah, he's closed up to within about a second. Let's look at this move. Uh, Zach Sternhagen is challenging Drew for P17, Drew Lidke. For P17. Drew driving the uh, plaid Porsche there. Yeah. Was Zach able to get by without much incident there? Looked like Drew went a little bit wide on that turn. Uh, 
looks like we may have had an incident with uh, Gabriel Albano. Let's see what happened here. Gabriel in the uh, red and yellow Ferrari here. Looks like it just got loose and went into the wall. A little flick spin here to get it going, and it looks like he's going to be able to keep moving at the very least. That's a rough spot to crash right after pit exit. You now got a whole lap to drive before you can go back into pit. Yeah. And certainly a very odd incident in a way to lose a car because you're, you had a medium speed really loaded up with a car and just to have it swap in. I'm sure we're not, unfortunately not going to be the only Ferrari we see tonight. I think I think Paul and I definitely take some of the blame because we've seen quite the uh, the increase in Ferraris this season from last, and unfortunately, it's uh, not as friendly to drive. We just saw the uh, rainbow-colored Porsche of uh, David Nellis representing the Trevor Project. Let uh, JT go by. Yeah. David McNeilis, of course, being a teammate of ours. Let's check in on our one of our favorite liveries of Pierre Robitaille here in the 267. Looks like he's already pitted already. Uh, not, haven't seen everything that happened here, but it looks like he uh, qualified in about P21 and has uh, dropped a few spots since then, but he is still going strong by the looks of it, uh, challenging Larry Ford here for, for uh, 30th overall. Looks like he's going to make that move. Ah, oh, that ugly Christmas sweater just looks so beautiful here on a hot summer day. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> Only six more months to go. Yep. <laughs> we'll check in with uh, Luis Ortiz here. He's... Uh, not a new driver with us he he registered i think a season or two ago but uh he hasn't had a chance to get out and race with us too much before now so this is uh uh you know one of his first races with us and and it's been a while so glad to see him back out here Thank you. uh looks like he's uh had a pretty good run so far up 13 spots into p18 yes that's certainly uh certainly a good accomplishment thus far through the race uh, repping that handsome Turner BMW uh, livery, too. Yes. <laughs> I think he's being hunted right now by uh, Paul Darling. That is not a man you want to have in your mirrors. Oh, pardon me. That's Shane Hunter behind him, not Paul Darling. <laughs> uh, Shane also very quick. Uh, hunted by a literal hunter. Uh, if you could hear the smile. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like a lot of our drivers have pitted already uh, in the last few laps here. We are uh, you know, past the midway point of the race, so uh, whether they've taken... You know, sort of a, a large fuel loader, as Justin said, maybe just take enough to, you know, to sort of use up the tires. But uh, several drivers, including most of the front half of the field, have not taken a pit stop yet. As we see Steven here challenging uh, Carlos... Uh, the battle for sixth spot. 
Indeed it is, and they are absolutely nose to tail here. Oh, and there was a car off there, the number 12. Sure, that was an exciting moment for the two drivers here battling. <laughs> Definitely. Steven looks like he was able to late break. Get through there. That's uh, Steven Yanni, uh, previously an, an AM driver, but he was too damn quick, so we told him he had to go pro, and he's uh, he's making it look real easy out there, up in uh, now sixth overall. Certainly not looking out of place. No, not at all. And I'm just seeing here, Samuel Scott may have had an issue. Oh, yeah, looks like he got onto the curbing a little bit too much there and went to go mow the grass. Did we uh, keep track of how many Ferraris have gone off today? <laughs> no, but if you want to Just start a spreadsheet. Just for a personal letter to <laughs> iRacing, maybe. <laughs> I want to say I've seen one Porsche and like four Ferraris. Well, I don't claim to have uh, been, you know, strictly democratic in which incidents I'm looking at. I'm just looking at what the, uh, you know, what the the uh, software here is highlighting for us. Please, whichever, you know, is more convenient to my argument. Let's have a look uh, a little bit further back in the field. Uh, looks like we've got a you know pretty close running here between uh, we've got Leonard Burke uh, one lap ahead of Mike Tyler and, and David Kaufman here. Actually, that's that who that is or not? I can't see the number here, but anyways, yeah. So just wanted to give a shout out to to uh, some of our drivers closer to the back here so leonard mike david and claude are are uh, still going here a couple laps down but that's okay this is a long race and uh everybody's in it here for points so you know completing half the race makes you eligible for points and uh of course it's just fun to get out and race isn't it Oh, we're all having fun doing that. Uh, those of us here in the booth, we're having fun doing this too. Yes, we are. Oh, it looks like we are down our ugly Christmas sweater. And see, uh, Pierre's off track there on our ticker. Okay, well, I will see if I can find that incident. It's not showing up for me. Ah, a little off track there by Leonard, but it's uh, back underway. No worse for the wear. I do show, yeah, Pierre has uh, has left the race. Not sure if that was uh, due to an incident or, or just due to him packing it in. I suspect that may be the case if I'm, if I'm not seeing anything up here. Well, mechanical issues do still happen in the virtual racing world, too. Yes, they do. Let's check in on our leaders here. We still have uh, Max, of course, leading the field here. Uh, he's pulled a gap of nine seconds to Miguel in P2. And Miguel has pulled a, a gap of... Uh, oh, my brain just stopped working, but uh, about 11 seconds, I think. Back to Paul. Looks like we've got a pretty good battle brewing there between Paul and Michael for third. Yeah, let's check in on that. 
few minutes ago we had seen that uh, Michael was slowly uh, reeling in Paul. Looks like he's right on his bumper now. Yeah, Paul just went pretty wide there. Oh, wide through turn one? Well, that's an easy way to gain a position. <laughs> Probably not quite the way Michael expected to get it. No, but we take those. <laughs> Oh, you haven't seen Paul Darling Pit yet. And, uh, as uh, Justin was referencing earlier, there are known to be hard on tires. So perhaps he's uh, starting to use those up. I wouldn't be surprised if most of the leaders didn't take more than two tires. Just looking at the, the lap times and degradation, you've got about 34 laps where you're quick, so you're gaining, let's say, a second. And then the rest, it just stabilizes in a place where I'm sure the, the drivers aren't liking, especially those in uh, Ferraris, but you're not going to gain much by pitting around the 45-minute mark and taking L4. So I imagine for most of them, they're probably going to extend. So I imagine Paul would have been in here pretty quickly at the halfway point if he was planning on taking L4. Yes, that is a fair point. He'd be in pretty deep into the race to not have stopped for tires by now. We've had... Uh, let's see, David McNeilis here has managed to get past Carlos Ramos for P7. maybe a little bit shaken up by pit stop so it's a little hard to gauge but he is looking good out there as we've had most of our field now come in for stops, but uh, yeah, the, the top four. Uh, oh, okay, Miguel just coming in now on his 28th lap. Let's see how long he's on the jacks. I'm going to bet he's not taking all four, but I could be wrong. Yeah, here he comes now. About an 18, 19 second pit stop. I don't recall in the GTs, but I imagine that's a little bit more time than I would expect for uh, for two tires in fuel. Yeah, there he gets away now. Well, ultimately, it really just depends how much fuel they're going to need. Yeah, it's always a always something for us commentators to you know sort of wonder about what what sort of you know how that's all going to shake out once everybody gets on track racing together. So we've got you know we get some practice data, but uh, you know in a race, of course, it's always different with uh, the draft and uh, what everybody else is doing. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like Paul, the leading Ferrari at the moment, is driving much like a, a car I had at round one, which is uh, being rather unfriendly to him. But I'm surprised he isn't taking tires. I mean, maybe that just proves the point that there isn't much to be gained, and he just has to suffer through it for this round and go back to their drawing board and see if uh, any... Yep. He looks like, you know, despite having to arm wrestle the car a little bit, he's still managing to keep pace pretty well. Oh, 
Got uh, JT Tammy in that four to six position now. Yeah, he's uh, really been moving through the field, hasn't he? Uh, noted fuel miser. He's uh, going to spend a little less time in the pits than uh, most will. We're watching Paul Darling here through turn 12. And then through 13 and 14 here, this quick chicane. Yep, he's looking mighty fine. And oh, a late entry in there to the pits. pits. Yeah, that uh, really darted in there. Looks like he's following Michael Parker. Wonder if that was a late call on his behalf. Uh, Might have been. Sure We've got been. Max Meir in the pits too. So that's the last three out of the top five that have yet to pit. JT staying out, which is uh, not a big surprise to me. Cardo Delgado, our AM leaders in the pits. Let's see if Paul is able to, uh, to pit Mike in the pits here. Okay, so he's made it out just, uh, looks like they had pretty he similar is. times. Uh, he's lost a little bit of time, I think, to Michael. Okay, yeah. Perhaps my, perhaps Paul took one tire. So JT now, of course, hasn't pitted yet, but up 18 spots, so we'll see how many of those he's able to hang on to after he... He's going to have to come in. Thank you. I'm, I'm showing Max Muir still in the pits. Is that correct? Let's find out. Uh, no, he's out. He is further up the track, okay. Let's check in on uh, Drew Lidke. I see he's completed his pit stop. He has managed to gain 26 spots since the start of the race, uh, which is just frightening to me. <laughs> Well, that's a combination of some good speed and uh, some heads-up driving to avoid any incidents. Definitely. That uh, the plaid seems to be doing okay for him. I'm sure he wanted to, uh, you know, to do most of that work in qualifying, but but uh, you know, still, I'm sure happy with uh, the sort of recovery drive that he's been able to do here. So Drew's currently being hounded there by Rodney Campbell. We'll see if that Ferrari is able to uh, get any closer to the rear bumper of Drew. Oh, we've got our uh, JT in the pits. Oh, there he is finally. I get a radio check. Radio check. Oh, very good. For whatever reason, my mic, the DAC I have, loves to build out static, and it, it just disappears on me from time to time. Yeah. We're good now. So it looks like uh, that's, I think, our whole field has now pitted. Uh, JT was the last holdout there, uh, as we've seen before more than once. And... Uh, He's going to come out now on his uh, outlap, I think, in P4 overall. Well, that would be quite an accomplishment if he's able to gain that much time. 
Oh, but he's just uh, hasn't quite been able to get past uh, Paul Darling here. So he has. Okay, so there's the timing update. He's he's uh, going back to boat where he should be. I think. My apologies for that. I would say for most of the top of the field, it appears they all took full tanks, and I'm not sure on the, their tire choice if they took one side or all four, but it appears to be standard standard time for most of the drivers, which actually is a little bit surprising. I would have figured at least someone would have underfield, because if you're going to take more than two tires, you don't want to be carrying that weight around the whole time, but... Maybe there's just not enough time in the tires themselves. Right. It's possible drivers are calling audibles here because the, the track temperatures are pretty hot. Might be hotter than some were expecting. That's true, but at the same time, it looks like the about the normal, the 53-minute mark seems to be about normal for a tank of uh, gas in a GT3 car. So, And with going 75 minutes full way. I imagine all of them could take two tires, no penalty, but four is probably a bit much. And if you're going to take four, you don't want to take all the fuel around with you for the entire race, so I imagine some of the early stoppers around the 35 to 45 minute mark might have done it, but I imagine the lead guys are on two tires, if not one. We've just been watching the battle between Steven Yanni and Ricardo Delgado here. Uh, they have passed each other up a couple of times now in this in this segment, and uh, don't show any signs of letting up. That's a former AM champion and a current AM leader. Yes. So that's a pretty good benchmark to be pacing yourself against if you're uh, Ricardo. Yeah, but yeah. Steven's always been a joy to race with, so... Hopefully I don't jinx either of them with saying that, but he's definitely a good time. Yeah, they're both making it look really good out there. Oh, with about 18 minutes left here, uh, we'll do another quick rundown. Uh, so at the front, we still have uh, Max Muir, your, your overall and uh, also points leader in P1 with a healthy gap of 13 seconds back to this man, Miguel Colon in P2, uh, followed by Michael Parker here in P3 in the uh, in the black, orange, and blue here. And uh, close behind is is Paul Darling, who we've been talking a lot about here in P4, and Carlos Ramos. Uh, just a short jump behind in P5. And that's your top five in the pro category. In AM, we have Ricardo Delgado, who we were just looking at a minute ago in P1. Uh, he is ahead of, uh, you know, several of the pro drivers here, which is, that's, you know, that's normal. We expect to see uh, AM drivers and pro drivers mixing it up. That's how our points work. Uh, Pro drivers will want to pass AM drivers as much as they can to get those points for their for their own points battles, and likewise. So uh, Ricardo here leading the AM field, uh, followed a little bit ways back by Bobby Babaletskos in P2, uh, and close behind him is David Mc, David McNeilis here in P3, and then a couple spots back we have Zach Sternhagen in the uh, really nice looking shiny uh, 283 car. And the uh, last in the P5s here is uh, Shane Hunter back in, two ni in the 298 car. And those are your leaders in both classes as we close in on 15 minutes left in this 75 minute race around Hockenheim ring. Uh, so Liam, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, how the race has gone so far? Is this kind of what you've expected so far? Any surprises? Uh, I don't think I've seen too many surprises so far as uh, drivers in their current positions. Um, and Justin, I know you, you know, you missed a little bit of the, the start of the race, but uh, how things have shaped up here, what are your thoughts? 
I'm actually surprised we didn't see any strategy differentiation between the front runners. Now there might have been some in the AM class, but I'm not overly familiar with when they pitted. But at the same time, somewhat expected. But I imagine we'll see a much tighter field coming in the next couple of races as Miguel seems to be starting to figure out. I believe it is the Lamborghini he's driving. Yes. Uh, and all will hopefully figure out, as well as me, um, the tire over in the Ferrari, and we'll be able to give Max a, a little bit closer competition in the future. And I will say, in, in Max's defense, I know he's not driving the best setup in the world. It's, uh, he's just driving, he's just driving the car, so all the credit to him at the moment, but hopefully in the, the near future I have the time and can put him a little bit more under pressure than he is right now. Especially if there's uh, some fuel saving to be had. Oh, we have Steven Yanni here and Ricardo Delgado, just, uh, little bit of a door tap there just to say hello but uh managed to get by again that is now i've lost count of the number of times these two have passed each other up it's been uh, four times in the last five minutes they're certainly not shy about uh, going side by side <laughs> no yeah i guess i've had the pleasure of racing with ricardo but i do know steven so hopefully I keep an eye comes out on top. So uh, Pete Hebron here has taken a pit stop on, on lap 35. I know he had already come in, but uh, whether this is due to, to damage or maybe a, a little glitch in the fuel strategy. Are you able to check his incident count? Well, actually, uh, no. It looks like he's uh, going to take service. Yeah. This is definitely an easy track to uh, rack up incident points. Yeah, that's true. We uh, For the 75-minute races here, we have an incident limit of 21x. Uh, so if you're not familiar with iRacing, uh, just going off track will usually get you a 1x. Uh, losing control gets you a 2x. And if you have contact with another car, uh, serious enough contact, that'll be a 4x. So yeah, if you if you add up all those points and it's it's 21 or higher, then uh, I racing will force you to go in for a drive-through penalty here. That's a slow walk of shame for a driver. Yeah, definitely. But it seems to be a good uh, you know incentive just to be careful not to you know not to spend your incident points uh, too willy-nilly out there. No, and especially as you come in towards the uh, the last few laps of the race, uh, you know, drivers will be racing each other a little harder for those final spots. And uh, a small contact can, as you say, rack up an extra two or four incident points pretty quick. Yeah, definitely. So we've got Carlos Ramos in the Coca-Cola machine following, uh, I think that's AJ having a good race, Anthony James in the Dunkin' Donuts Lamborghini. Mm-hmm little blink to say I'd like to pass you please which he happily obliges Carlos and JP there are in a pretty tight battle for fifth so you can show Samuel Scott here at a pretty big off He's able to get it going and a bit deep there in turn two yep a little bit unusual of a place to have it, especially just straight line braking. If I was to speculate, I would suggest he probably was a little late as he was looking in his mirrors for, uh, I think it was P3 and P4. Speaking of uh, unusual incidents. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, JP Alfonso, our uh, number number six in class right now. Maybe he decided he enjoyed passing that Lamborghini so much he wanted to do it again. <laughs> yeah. As long as it, he doesn't make it a third time. And 
we've got uh, Larry Ford coming in. It looks like Larry may have had a an issue here. Just see what happened with him. There was two cars in there. There was a car, yeah, a car just in front of him. Yeah, let's let me go back to that if I can. Here, okay, here's Larry Ford. No, he just goes goes for the pits. But there's also a car following in front, so... I think that might have been the purple and black Porsche of Leonard Burke, but I'm not sure. I'd be very curious to see if he stops. He did stop. Oh no, is that, uh, is that Ken Estridge? I think it may be. I wonder if yes, by he, chance he came getting in. front splitter damage or something along those lines and just coming in for the fast repair. Yeah, that was a quick stop from Larry, so that, that could have been. I think that's about all you'd be doing is getting that fast repair with that kind of a stop. Well, maybe there was some argy bargy. So we're looking at Max Muir here coming up on some back markers. some traffic to negotiate here in the last 10 minutes of the race. And if you're Max, you know you've got a 15 second lead, so you know, you want to get through this traffic, but uh, I would imagine he's not in a great hurry to do so. No, patience is certainly uh, an important factor. And, uh, he's not looking terribly aggressive here. So the main thing for Max is to not get caught out by their braking zones. You're so used to running your own, your own race and your own line, and then someone might be 100, 100 meters earlier than you. So. Yeah, that's true. And I think these drivers in front of him might be for positions, so he might not want to have an impact on their race either. Or a minimal impact, anyway. I will say, especially in CMS, that is something we do, do consider at least a little bit is how to... Uh, That's in a way that is most friendly to their races when you have the opportunity. But at the same time, it can open you up to risk. So, Yeah, it can. We, but you're right. I mean, we're we're a league, uh, you know, big league of friends, really. Uh, you know, 4,000 friends at this point, but but who's counting? Uh, but yeah, we, when you're racing the same people week after week, uh, you got to take that into account. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to start some some sort of feud that's going to just end up costing you in the long run. Yeah, I would say the majority of drivers generally do a, a decent job of respecting blue flags, both as the passer and the, the one being passed. Yeah, yeah. There's been do. more than a few times where I'm in a, a very strong race for position, almost at the end of the race by a few seconds and they're more than happy to get out of the way if they're not racing anyone and likewise I think Max I and several others at the front try and return the favor as much as we can when we're fortunate enough to build up as much of a gap as Max has today yeah yeah and that's what it takes you know we've got a big community here and uh, if we didn't have that sort of attitude it would be a much different place to race well, and there's there's karma, I think, too. It's, uh, you give a little bit this race, and you'll get it back a little later down the season. Yep. But here's Claude Belval. It looks like he's uh, again. He's yeah, gone a little bit wide here. Is he? He's stopping, or is he just looking for a place to rejoin? Okay, there he goes. You know, I'm not privy to the tire wear information. But I do wonder, with a couple of those late pit stops, if they were getting meatballed for a uh, tire wear on one of their... I'm going to assume it'd be the the front right, actually, because I'm, they probably replaced the front left. Yeah, yeah. Would a fast repair change the tire that quickly, or would you have to go through a tire repair? It would not. You would have to take a tire. So at least one of the three we saw was for damage, but the other two may have just used a little bit too much of their tires. 
which I would find surprising. I mean, if you have an off or anything big in iRacing, you'll wear a lot of your tire out much more quicker, which is very nice to have modeled as it's something to consider in the real world. But at the same time, if you have a bad day, get pushed off the track, whatever it may be, you suddenly go from what may be an easy one stop to having to take a new set of tires. So it could be unfortunate for the drivers, but I would imagine if it was that close on tire wear, we would have seen at least a few more than the five or so cars that came in at the 35 minute to 45 minute mark. Oh no, it looks like Mike Tyler had uh, chose to just dive out of the way of a very flashy blinky Miguel Colon. He was in a battle position there with the, uh, we'll say, lightly damaged David Kaufman machine. Yes. Mike Tyler's going. definitely a treasure of the CMS community, I would say. He's always uh, providing photos after most races, and I think uh, he's a very endeared driver for that. Oh, I think that's a very good way of putting it. And if you... Uh, it you know, and he's helped us out a lot with uh, some other things, such as the uh, the number plates that you, that you see on the cars here. Those are a Mike Tyler invention that the drivers are, are putting on their cars. I think Mike's also responsible for the Longhorn Racing Team liveries. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think he's responsible for more than a few, and he's done a very good job. Has Brett Stevens lost his hood? I think he has. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's the car in front of them. Oh, oh, right, but... It's uh, David Kaufman that's running around without the hood. Right. As we check in on our leaders again here, Max still working through some of that traffic. Uh, Miguel... Oh, Miguel has passed up Paul Darling. Or, my... Uh, sorry, Michael has passed up Paul, Paul Darling. Uh, yeah, so that was just before the pit stop. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like Max is going to get around uh, the last of the traffic here, coming into this turn. And he should have some clear sailing ahead of him. It looks like Ricardo and Steven are still going at it, too. Yeah, let's check in that, on that. That battle's been brewing for 15 minutes, at least. It's the 231 and 48 car. Just as I click on them, they're, they're already side by side again. And if you're Anthony James, you've got to be enjoying that battle in front of you. Yeah. Oh, Steven with an optimistic look there, had to back out of it, and that's cost him a little bit of time. Yeah, he's a little far back for that one, but but sometimes you just have a look to see what the other guy's going to do. Show them your nose. Yep. Well, these, these two are definitely going to have something to talk about after the race. But all, all the action that they've seen. So one thing I've always loved about CMS, we just, uh, yeah, ever since the, the old days of, of us running on forums and stuff, we've always had a strong contingent of people that will just come and talk about the race after the fact and, you know, write up a little... Uh, little summaries of how things went always love to see those yes we, there's a... here. we have quite the close fight for p2 and p3 of the amp class oh david mcneilis and bobby babalascos check in on them Bobby using all that curb to try to gain some ground here. Not sure if it helps. Maybe a little bit too much. Yeah, maybe. It 
Might be. Well, I see it. It would also appear Drew has had quite the recovery race. Yes, he has. I know a lot of drivers don't like to to be starting from the back, but in in a, in a way, it's a bit of a privilege to get to do recovery race every once in a while. It's different than your normal race, and you just try and have a good time with it. Yep. So as we have uh, just 10 seconds left in official time, we'll be expecting the, the white flag here, uh, I would think the next time by. Well, I, I think I just saw the uh, flag stand there throwing the flag as we sailed past with Bobby. Okay, all right. I am... Uh... You know, still learning this this UI. I thought I would have the flag on screen. Uh, maybe he was throwing a blue flag. Do they do that in iRacing yet? I think so. So as we check in on Max, he's going uh, very slowly here. He's He's coming out of the pits. Is our race over? <laughs> Did we just miss the end of the race? <laughs> I think we must have. Or we've got uh, a few drivers that uh, have run out of fuel. They're still go. I mean, they're still uh, like mobile, though. Uh, yeah, everybody's pulling over. We okay? Well, hey, All right, so we we have done it. So Max Muir has uh, brought home uh, another uh, race win. Yeah, and uh, Miguel coming in right behind him with uh, Michael and Paul, and uh, Carlos rounding out your top five in pro, and uh, we still have Ricardo at the top of the field and Am with. Uh, David McNeilis in P2, Bobby Bebeletskos in P3, Zach in P4, and Shane Hunter in P5. And that is going to be your your top five in Pro and M. Um, and now, as uh, all the drivers come in on their cooldown lap, uh, let's let's see if we can maybe do a couple interviews. So I'm going to see who we can. We can just snag here if there's anybody that's uh, that's in the iRacing chat that that wants to join us. If you're one of the top the top finishers, right. uh, congratulations, Max. On the uh, but uh, as we're as we're doing that, uh, yeah, Justin, your reactions. What what do you think? I would say overall, it's as expected. It was fairly uneventful, but. Judging by the, the sheer number of Ferraris we saw going off track, which is, I wouldn't say going off track. We I understand they seem to struggle a bit more in hotter weather, but at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, I wouldn't constitute that as very hot. So I imagine many of them will, will both be curious as to why and be wondering if they should be driving a Porsche right about now, which, unfortunately, there's a lot of Porsches, a lot of Ferraris, and very few and far in between of other classes, which is a little bit unfortunate for this season. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Porsche being being new, and a lot of people seem to really take to it. Uh, reports being that it, it just seems very stable and very, you know, pretty easy to drive it quickly. Alright, we have Michael Parker that we can pull in here. He's your your top three finisher. Just uh, stand by while we do that. And uh, yeah, Liam, why don't you take it away with Michael here once we once we get him in? Uh, hey, Michael, can you hear us? 
Hey, loud and clear. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Lee. Hey. Hey, Michael. Great drive there. You got to be pretty happy with the third place. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Considering um, I didn't spend much time uh, creating a setup this week. <laughs> so I was happy to at least keep pace with the top three. Um, once I saw Paul kind of get away at the start, um, it was just pretty much maintaining pace and try to, you know, save a little bit of tire midway. And I think that ended up actually helping me um, catch Paul in the end. Uh, Max and Miguel were kind of out of the picture at that point. But yeah, it was fun fighting with Paul for a little bit. I can tell his setup was probably uh, not ideal <laughs> for long term. What uh, what kind of uh, pit strategy were you uh, running today? Uh, full tank and um, just seeing where I could get. Uh, I didn't really do a ton of like long stints in practice, so I was just guessing at what the tire wear would be, but Considering the amount of fuel I was putting in, I figured uh, two tires would be free, um, which they were perfectly. Um, and I kind of got really close on the on the fuel, <laughs> so I, I, I jumped Paul a little bit in the pits, but uh, I had a little less than a lap left, so right at the end. So I think it worked out. Well, that's what you're looking for with your fuel level is less than a lap. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> it was fun though. Well, that was a fun drive watching you. Uh, once again, congratulations on a top three. Yeah, definitely. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. It was uh, a lot of fun tonight. All right. Thanks a lot, Michael. Uh, let's get uh, let's get Bobby in here. He's your uh, P3 finisher, I think, in M, if I remember right. Uh, and Justin, I'll let you take it away with him once he's in here. Certainly. Bobby, can you hear us? Oh, yes, can you hear me? Awesome. So walk us through your race today. Anything that surprised you tonight? Oh, man, what you... That really yeah, was an awesome race. Uh, all sweaty, all the way through. Um, yeah, the first two last were pretty stressful. Both um, had some side-by-side -side for what it seemed like two laps straight with uh, one of the Audis that was in front of me. Uh, so it was a very enjoyable race. Uh, during the middle of the race, I was catching up maybe quite wheels. And uh, ended up taking one of the two left tires. Uh, I thought I had him with a pit stops, but um, he started making ground. Uh, I want to assume that he took four tires. So, so you know, in the end, this couldn't keep it behind me. Uh, he finished a couple of seconds left ahead of me. So most, that was very nice uh, to be a part of as well. Very good. Now, did you did you pit at the the halfway mark, or did you did you delay it any? Uh, I pit at the uh, right at the forty-five minute mark, I believe. Oh, hey, at least someone someone pits at the time I estimated people would. I appreciate <laughs> that. Well, you looked good out there. I'm I'm happy to say you took P three. I know you probably wanted P two, but there's always the next race. Hey, I feel if I lose P three like this, it's such a great race. I'll take it. It was a awesome race. Certainly, you did very well. Thanks for thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot, Bobby. All right, gentlemen, I think we've uh, we've done it. This one's in the bag. Uh, thank you to all of our viewers for for sticking it out with us while uh, while I try to, to to wrangle all the cameras and everything. I, I know I'm not as good as David at it, but uh, hopefully we're still able to bring you some entertainment. Uh, many thanks to my co-commentators here, Liam Park and Justin Hess, and uh, we will catch you next week. Thanks, Ryan. See you, Ryan.